Hello class, in this video I'm going to be completing your final exam. So I have already downloaded the file, it is right here, so I'm going to open with my PDF viewer. I'm going to put it right there in the corner, and I'm going to open a terminal. Okay, I'll put the terminal right here, let me increase the font, and let's take a look. Pre-work, complete this before you start your final. In your home directory, where I am, create a folder called final, mkdir, final. Okay, there we are going to create a file called final, your first name, your last name, that md. And then we're going to open VS Code, sorry. in our present working directory. Sorry, this is a new virtual machine and VS Code is not installed. Let's solve that real quick. sudo snap install. This is gonna take a little bit. Then inside this folder, we're going to create this over here. Let me zoom in. Okay, perfect. So, Okay, title, final, exam, submission. Then we got question, number, and then here. And we have question 1.1.png. 1 1 and here we're going to call this question and then whatever number the question is. So what I'm going to do, and finally we're going to put a break tag here, just for formatting. We have five questions, so two, three, four, five, 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 four, 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 four. I'm sorry, this is question three. Question three, two, Okay, we're going to save this file and we don't need VS Code open anymore. No. Let's zoom out of here. Hide that. Zoom out. Okay, we have completed this part. Each question is worth 20 points. Each subpart is worth 5 points. And make, before we start doing anything here, make sure we type CD because we need to work from our home directory. And let's, die, let's do clear. Okay, all questions are independent from each other and we can work in whatever order we want. 
after I read the whole thing, you know, I, I make an assessment of which is the easiest question to complete and which is the hardest, so that I can start doing the easy one first, so that I can save time. I can see by this that question one is long, so I'm not going to do question one first. Question two seems to be long as well. Question three seems to be long as well. But question four over here, four questions, and all I have to do is complete this task after I download an image from the internet. So I'm going to do question four first. So I'm going to go online. And I'm gonna type Ubuntu logo. You know, just it's a random question, it's a random image. And I'm gonna save this. And I'm gonna call this Ubuntu.png and I'm gonna put it in my downloads folder. I don't need the web browser open anymore. And here it says, what is the absolute path of the image? You can use any command you want for this, but if you but if, if you want, you know, the easiest way, I believe, it would be just to do an ls command, right? Because if I want, if I need to get the absolute path of the of the image, if I type ls downloads Ubuntu, the output will give me exactly the absolute path of the particular question I want, or the particular image that I want. What is the inode number of the image? Now, if you go into your notes, you're going to see that the, in the chapter that we talk about inodes, the, there are two ways of seeing the inode number of a file. One of them is with the stat command. Another one is using the ls command. See? Okay. Which command would you use to move the folder from here, uh, from what it is, to here? And rename it at the same time. Again, if you go into your notes, you're going to see that the MV command is used for naming and for removing and for and for moving and for renaming. And there is a way to do both of the things at the same time by simply providing a new name in the new location. Again, stuff that should be in your notes. MV downloads Ubuntu user share backgrounds Ubuntu logo that png now when i run this command this command is going to fail and as you can see it fails because you get a permission denied error now this folder is not owned by you it's owned by root and again if you go into your notes you're going to see that whenever you need to do an administrative task or a task that requires you to become root you need to provide the sudo keyword and then run the command so i'm going to put sudo at the beginning and i'm going to press enter now, what command would you use to know the size of the image, including its permission, the full, the, the full date, and the last time it was modified? Now, let's assume you don't remember the options of the MV command. Now, for that, we can open another terminal on the side, and we can do ls help, or you can go on your notes, and take a look at the options that we have over here. Now, this is not very comfortable, so... I'm going to open it over here in the bottom instead. Okay, so I need to obviously do a long list. But that long list needs to include the size of the image, including its permission. Well, then the long list includes both. And the full date. This is the key here. The full date when it was last modified. So you will go through these through these options over here and you'll find the one that actually gives you what you want or or you can simply do this full time if you remember the grep command the grep command can parse through an output of text and provide you with what you're looking for. This is very helpful when you're working with help and, and man pages because then you can look for the particular word that you're looking for that is related to what you want to do. Full time. And then... Remember that we moved the image to this folder over here. And there you go. Here is what here is what I was looking for. Everything that we want. Now, now that I have completed this part, I'm gonna take my screenshot.
and I'm going to highlight my answers. This was the answer for the first part. This was the command that answered the first part. This is the command that answered the second part. This command over here answered the other part. And this was the last command that I ran to answer the question about uh, the size and, and the time. I'm going to save this and I'm going to put it in my final project right over here. And I'm going to name it question 4 dot png because it only took me one screenshot to do it. But if it took you more than one screenshot, then question 4.1, for instance, dot png. And I'm going to click on save. Okay, now that I finished question four, let's take a look at question number five. Now, question number five over here is kind of long, right? So now I can pick and do it in whatever order I want. So I, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to do question number one. In question number one, I gave you a description of what Joy was going to take in the next semester. These are the classes he's going to take. This is how his folder looked last semester, right? Here, you're going to find the files that you need to, to complete this question. The first thing you need to do is run this command over here as the instructions say you should. So we're going to copy this, we're going to paste it here, and press enter. Done. Now, if you do ls, in your home directory, you're going to have a folder called midterm files. You now have all the files that Joy Friends gave him inside this folder over here, and I gave you the absolute path of where you can find the files. Using this information, let's do question A to D. In your home directory, create a directory, get a create a directory structure that Joe will need uh, for the spring semester. These are the, these are the assignments he's gonna take. These are the folders that need to go inside each one of them. So we're gonna do mkdir and we're gonna do a spring 22. Then in here we're gonna do ma 200 ci 280. BI 231 and then ENG 201. Then in here we are going to provide notes, assignments, and material. Now this command is missing an important flag which is P for parent directory. If you go on your notes, you're going to see an example on how to create multiple directories, parents and child directory, in using Brace expansion, which is one of the reasons why I say you should take proper notes throughout the semester so that you can use them in your final. Okay. Now that we have completed the step A, we are going to unarchive the files and move the files to their respective directories. Okay, so we need to get this file over here, right? So you, there are multiple ways where you could have approached this. You could have CD into this directory, unarchive the files, and then move the files. Now, I think that a smarter way will be to actually move this folder, move this file, or, or copy this file to your Spring 22 folder. Then once you're in there, extract the file. Extract file question one that are perfect. And then you can do the the, the the rearranging. Now if you want, you know, and this is actually a good idea, open a second terminal. CD into the spring folder. Do an ls and do an ls of the question one directory so that you can see what you have in here. This will allow you then to run to, to write more clear commands over here. Now, I have assignments biology that doc x. So if you do a tree of this directory here, you're gonna see that biology has a folder called assignments. So we need to move this file to here. So we do a mv. Question one, assignments that value, and we're going to move it to value assignments. Okay, now the next file that we need to move is CIS book. So we're going to do MV, CIS 280, sorry, MV, C, question one, CIS, CIS book, and we're going to move that to CI 280. 
And since it's a book, that's material, we're going to put it in the material folder. Finally, we're going to move notes. Question one. Notes math.md. And then we're going to move that to MA notes. Now that we did, now, now that we finished this, why? Now that we finished this part over here, it would be a good idea to get rid of this folder because this is not part of the question. We just did this so that we can, you know, uh, write shorter commands, you know. And then we can remove this as well. So we're going to do rm question one dot r minus r. This over here is going to get rid of this and it's going to get rid of this folder. Okay, now if we do a tree command one more time, Notice that all the files that we were looking for are put in, the, in their correct directories and that the only thing that we have in the spring directory is the folders that we were expected to have. Now we can clean that over there. And here it says, on archive the files, that we did that already, display a tree of all the files inside Joy's spring semester. Now if we run the tree command over here, Obviously, it's you know it's gonna cover some of the of the stuff that we did over here. However, the answer to our questions start over here, so we don't really have to open a new terminal, or do anything like that. We can just simply continue typing commands. So here, let's display a tree, and that's just simply tree. Now we need to show their file permissions and their file size with human readable file sizes. Now for C, if you use the ls command, I'm okay. If you use the tree command, I'm also okay. So let's say that you want to use the tree command, but you don't remember the options for the tree command. This is when you could either use help or man. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to show file permissions, right? So let's see what options allows us to do file permissions. Symbolic links, print full path, stay in the current directory, descend, return, list, do not list, ignore, include, turn off, file options, print non-printable characters, quote file names, print protections for each file. So we need option minus P. Perfect. Now, and now we need to also show the file size. So print display file owner, display group owner, print the size in bytes for each file, and print the size in a more human readable way. So we're going to do H over there. Okay, press enter, and what you get? Exactly what you needed. So now we can close this over here and take our screenshot. Now we don't need all of that other mumbo jumbo. We can just copy from here. Because this is where our answers are. Let's highlight this. This is one of our, our answers. This is another one of our answers. And we're done. Now let's, cop let's save this file. And let's call this file question 1.1.png and let's click save. Now let's say that by s for some reason you forgot to do this. Right? You forgot to do this. Okay, no problem. Let's do a clear. Let's see, okay, create a file called Joyce Directory Structure TST and save the output of the command. Okay, so basically, we just need to run the same command again and save the output to a file. Now, notice that this has a little quote over here. If you go into your notes, you remember that if you need, if you want to put in special characters in a file, you need to pro, you need to escape those characters, and there is no easier way to do it than to surround it with quotes. Joyce directory structure that txt press enter and let's take our last screenshot just to show you works highlight save Question 1.2.png. We have completed question 1. Now let's move along to question number 2. In question number 2, 
Marta is a junior web from a web developer. Basically, uh, you are given a broken website in this folder. Your goal is to fix it. You don't need to modify the code. What you need to do is simply create the folders and move the files to their necessary folders. Now, I gave you a hint over here. These are the lines that you should be aware of because these tell you where the files are located. So what we are going to do is that we are going to CD into this folder because that makes our life easier. CD, clear, CD, paste. There you go. Now we are in this folder. Let's do a simple ls command. And notice that we have our index.html file over here. Now, using any command you want, you search and uh, inspect this file and try to find where these files go. Now, this file has to be referenced either using an absolute path or using a relative path. So I know that I am looking for a path inside this file. And what better command is there to use than grep? Grep, and the string that I'm looking for is called fabicon, fabicon.ico. I'm looking for this string inside this file, right? Notice that this, is a, this line over here, link, is one of the lines that I gave you over here. And the href here contains a path, similar to how I told you over here. Notice that in my folder, I don't have something called assets, neither image. So I need to create the assets folder and the image folder and then place Fabico inside this folder, right? Because this is the path that is being referenced in the code. So I'm going to do mkdir minus p assets assets image and then I'm going to move Fabico to assets image. Now we solve the first one. If you do another ls command and for that I'm going to open a second terminal so that I can work in a clean environment, you know, cd Meter files website. And I'm going to do ls. Notice that Fabico is now in the assets folder. Next, we're going to work with the portfolio folder. Where is this folder supposed to go? So we're going to we're going to run simil a similar command. Instead of looking for Fabico, we're going to be looking po for the word portfolio. Now, notice that it gave us a lot of stuff. So one of those stuff is an A tag, A over here portfolio box. I don't care about that, but here is an href over here. And it says that the portfolio folder is supposed to be inside the image folder that is inside the assets folder. So we're simply going to do MV portfolio and we're going to move that to assets image. And that's it. Now, if we do another ls command here, notice what happens. It's gone. Perfect. Now, notice that I already missed a couple of stuff. The first thing is that this output was too long and it cut a little bit of my output over here, but I need this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take a screenshot now before I continue so that I can have my answers saved Go over here. And I know that uh, uh, this is one of the answers, right? Because this is this is the command that I'm using to scan this file. Uh, that's not part of the answer. This was just me getting in there. And this is one of the answers over here, right? Now, you don't need to highlight the other one. And this is something that I mentioned during class. If you get one of the commands right, I don't need to see all the other commands. Because if you get one right, notice that what we're doing here is repeating the same process over and over and over and over. Because once you crack the case here, it's just repeating. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to save this. And I'm going to call this question 2.1. A PNG and I'm going to continue working on my stuff. So I'm going to do an ls command over here. I'm going to clear my screen over here. And now I need to move a script and I need to move a style. So I'm going to do grep a script index.html and I know that it goes inside a folder called JS. So I'm going to do mkdir JS and then I'm going to do an mv uh, a script script.js and that's going to be moved to the JS folder. The next thing that I'm going to be looking for is CSS, styles.css and that's supposed to be in a folder for CSS. So I'm going to do mkdir CSS, mv, styles.css to the folder called CSS. Enter 
Let's do another ls command over here to confirm we're working correctly. And there you go. Now that we have moved all the files to where they are supposed to go, we're going to continue with part B. Create all the necessary directory. We did that. Install the program Apache 2. sudo apt install Apache 2 minus y enter. Done. This installs fairly quick, so just give it like 30 seconds or so. Okie dokie. So now that we have installed the software, we need a screenshot of this because this is a question. So let's take a screenshot of this real quick. And let's save it and call it question 2.2.png. Cool. It's safe. Let's clear the screen over here because we don't need it anymore and we probably don't need this either. So now that we installed that, we need to rename this file, right? So I am going to save time and I'm going to copy it from here and I'm going to do mv here, mv.bk. That's it. The file, the new file name. Press enter. Oh no, what happened? Permission denied, right? And like we said before, if you go over your notes, you're going to say that when you got a permission denied, it's because you're not root and the particular action that you have requires to be root. That's not generally true because you could be working on other people's files. But in this case, we only have our user and root in our system. So we know for a fact that we need administrator privileges for this. We need to be super user. So let's do sudo. And if you go into your notes on Vash, this should ring a bell, allowing you to run the previous command as sudo. But I'm going to make your life easy, and I'm going to simply going to do it the long way. Done. So we have that part complete over there. Next, we're going to copy the content of this website, of this folder, into this folder over here. Again, I'm just going to make my life easy, and I'm going to copy that. But how do I copy all of this? Right, because we cannot copy the folder itself. We need to copy this. If you remember the wildcards, the star wildcard represents any number of characters, including zero characters, which means that it can match all of these files names over here. Right, so I'm going to do mv, right, because this is going to run on my current directory, and I'm going to move it to var www.html. But if you notice, this command is going to fail. Why? Because we got no permission to do this. So we're going to do the same thing again. Sudo, go over here. And I'm making this mistake on purpose over and over. Because this was a question that a lot of you guys kept asking me. Despite the fact that I kept telling you. You're not root. You need to run the command as root. Now that we've done that. We need to open this URL. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Voila. We need to take a screenshot of that. According to instructions over here, we need a screenshot of all of this. So I'm just going to take a single one to make my life easy. And I'm going to highlight my answers. So this was an answer. Uh, this was an answer. And that's about it. Yep, that's about it. Save. And this is question 2.3. Save. We can now close this. And we can move along to question number 3. Now let's say that by this point you run out of time. You run out of time. So far you have completed 3 questions. That already gives you 60 points in your exam. Actually, no, it gives you more than 60 points because, yeah, 60 points, because every question is worth 20 points. You already earn a 60 over here by doing that, by doing just those three questions. Let's say for some reason you couldn't do the other two questions, at least you passed the midterm. Sorry, the final. Let's continue over here. Question number three. I'm going to clear our screen. 
and we're going to do cd. Let's clear one more time. We need to generate this file over here. Or we can generate this file over here. Whichever of the two we want. Right? Now, the files that we want are over here. Inside this uh, compressed archive. So, let's go with instruction number one. Create a directory called question three. MKDIR. I might just call it Q3 to make it easy. Now, move the archive there. MV to question 3. List all the files in such a way that the information is shown over here, right? Okay, but we need to go CD, question 3, tar, extract file, question 3, that tar. And again, if you didn't remember how to use tar, that's why you brought your notes to the exam, so that you can look at the examples of the commands that you took throughout the semester and it can help yourself out, because I don't expect anybody to remember things from the top of their head. That would be irrational. So, inside the, the folder question 3, we have a bunch of files. All of these files, right? But if you see, in this ls command, it seems like I'm working inside the question 3 folder. So, logically, I'm going to go inside the question 3 folder, and I'm going to type an ls command. Okay, I see, I see all of this. Now, I need to generate an ls command that can give me all of this. Obviously, that would be an ls-l command. Okay, now we got... We're getting there. We got the first part. This. How I need to get rid of this now. When you were doing this question, I help you remembering that the cut command can be used for extracting data from a particular from from the output of a command or from a file. So, if you go into your notes of the cut command, right, you are gonna find an example using the delimiter option. That allows you to specify how the file is going to be cut, which character is going to be used for cutting the file. As a matter of fact, you had to use that command in one of your labs. So, I'm going to use cut minus D. My delimiter here is an empty space, as I want this file to be cut by empty spaces. Right? And then the fields that I want, I don't know how many fields are here, so I'm going to play around. I'm going to say, hey, give me, I know this is the first field, so I don't want the first field. So I'm going to take called gives me the second field to the, I don't know, 12th field, you know, to see if that gives me what I want. And we're getting there. This is looking more like this. But there is one thing, though. This seems like human readable file sizes. This doesn't. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to provide the H for human readable. And notice that now we're getting there. But we don't have this part, which is the numbers part. Ah, there is also another problem. If you look, this, these files, they seem to be arranged in a particular order. Like PDF files together, log files together, you know, image files together, and things like that. So, if you run it just like this, and you get something like this, It's very close to what we have here. So that's fine. That's perfectly fine. So what we're going to do now is, now that we have this part, we need to n generate these numbers over here. Now, you can do cat minus n. And if you remember the cat command, minus n allows you to print what? Line numbers. But there is a problem here. You see this? It's not here. Now, if you say, you know what, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm just going to submit it like that. I'm okay with that. I would, I would, I'm not going to take any points off. That's fine. That's fine. You, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be this meticulous. But let's say we want to get rid of this. So, cat should be the last thing that we run then if we want to get rid of this. So, if we run this command one more time. We don't want this. You could either use head to cut a specific head or tail to get a specific number of lines over here, or you could do it in a bit of it of a more cumbersome way. For example, you can just grep for this and exclude that from the grep command, like this. So 
sorry, minus V. Is it capital V? Nope. Let's take a look at the man page of grab. Man. Oh, sorry. Help. Grab. Ooh, no, that's correct. There you go. I forgot capital K and I was doing lowercase k. Okay. Now that we have this output over here, we find out the answer to our first part over here, which is list the commands in such a way that is shown as it is here. Next, we need to save this to a file so that we can generate the file. So we're going to save this one. I'm going to call it to file sorted. That MD. Now you can use Vim to do this. All files sorted, and then these are these are what markdown files, MD files, PDF files. image files script files and log files now there is something that I missed Notice that I forgot the cat command for this. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cancel that. Now I have the right thing. Oops, sorry. File sorted that MD, and now I can add my headings. All files sorted. These over here are PDF files, right? Sorry, MD files. MD. MD. PDF image scripts logs save the file and quit display the content of the markdown file that you completed and then just cat file sorted md now we can take our screenshot and highlight our answers. This is our command over here to generate this. This over here is to save a, as a file. This over here was what we used to generate the headings. And this was the last command that we run, the cat command. Save the file. Question, I believe this is question three, right? Question Question three, that one. Safe. Okay. Now we're going to go to question five because we finished question four. We're going to clear our screen. We're going to do CD, clear again. We have a clean canvas. Okay. We're going to generate this. So we need to add this to our bash RC file. So we're going to copy this. And we're going to open Vim. That, well, 
I gave you an exact. I I I told you to use um, Ginny in the question. What are you? What are you? Oh, I went ahead of the game. Let's do question A first. Display a list of five users in your system. Your list should include the username, login shell, and number lines. The output should look like this. Okay, so during class we mentioned that the this file contain information about all our users. We need to get the five the last five users. So I'm gonna do tail five. And these are the last five users. And we need those lines over here. But we're gonna do that last. What we need to modify now is we need this and the login shell. If you look at this, the login shell is the last line, is the last field. And the first field is the username. You did one of your labs where you had to do this exact question. So we're gonna do cut minus D. The delimiter is the column, as you can see over here. And the fields are 1 through 7. Finally, we need to also modify the delimiter to be this. So, this is a space, this arrow, and a space. And the file that we're coding is Etsy password. Now, we got what we wanted. But this doesn't this doesn't quite work for us. One and seven. There you go. This is the right command. One and seven. Now, if you go through your labs, you're gonna notice that there is one command. This actually answers one of your labs. Now, we need the last five. So let's pipe this into tail to get the last five. We got the last five. Now we need to produce these number lines over here. We can simply do, I believe that tail provides the option for that. So let's do tail help. No, it does not. So we're going to do cat. And now we got what we want, which is this. Okay. I'm going to clear my screen. I'm going to run the last command one more time so that I have a more clean environment. How many users does your computer have? If this file contains a list of all the users that I have, right? And every user is and every user is a line in that file. Remember from your lecture that the WC command provided the option L, and this is something that is in your notes that I told you to add to your notes, provides you the number of lines in a file. So if we run this command, we know that we have 48 users in our system. How many of them can log in into the system? You can only log in if you have an actual shell, like bin bash, right? So if we do grep, and this was also part of one of your labs and we actually did this question in class as well uh, bin bash notice that we get two lines and but if we want to get an exact number we can just simply do WC minus L and you see this is the number of users that can log in in our system okay now that we did that which command do you use to find this out the answer is right there in the screen the IP command that does a lot of things, you type IP ADD and that gives you this output over here. Uh, using Vim or Nano, open this file over here. Okay, so we're, I'm, I use Vim, so I'm going to use Vim. Vim Vash RC. At the end of this file, and to go to the end of the file, we simply do GG, capital GG, press enter. I and then enter to go into insert mode, copy this, and then paste it here, Control shift v Now we're going to save this file, and we're going to run this command, which is, oh, sorry. Did 
there you go, Control C, Control Shift B, which is gonna compile again our configuration file, and now we can do APD, AP, uh, IPADD, and then IP only. Now this output over here, your goal is to complete this. You need to generate a file that contains your username and your IP address. Now, a couple of ways of doing this. You could simply put here your username, which is, in my case, test. If you remember, option O gives you the string only. And we can simply do here head minus one. This gives us our username. That's one way. Another way is simply doing echo. And you remember about the dollar sign, the, vari the variable user. That also gives us the username. So we can do this and then save it to pcinfo.txt. Now, this IP address, which in my case would be the second line here, can be obtained. And this is something we also did in class by doing a head command minus two and then a tail minus one. Now I'm going to append that to the PC info file. And if I do a cat PC info, notice that we get exactly what we have over here, but with my computer information instead. Now we're going to change the permission to this of the file chmod u. So uh, the user here can read and execute. So we're going to do user equals to read and execute. The, the group can read and write and others can do nothing. So, and we provide the file, which is pcinfo.txt. If you do ls minus l, pcinfo, Notice that that's exactly what we were looking for. Read and execute, read, write, and nothing for other. Now that we have completed this, we can simply take a screenshot. Again, nothing that we did in this particular exam was not covered during class or during the labs. And as you can see over here, all of those things were things that I suggested, hey, you should have this in your notes. You should add this to your notes. It's important to put this in your notes, or this is in the midterm, this goes on the midterm. So we're going to copy that and we are going to save it. And this is question 5.1. That's it. And we have finished our midterm. We have finished our exam. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to close this terminal. We're going to minimize that and we're going to open VS Code. So we're going to go here, click search for code. Now the VS Code is open, we're going to open File Explorer on the side over here. We have all our screenshots here and we're just going to place the files over here. So now, since this is a clean installation of VS Code, I don't have the necessary instructions that we need. So I'm going to look for Markdown All-in-One. Markdown to PDF. And markdown preview enhance. Okay, now that I have my extensions installed, I'm gonna go back to my file over here. And how many question one pictures we have? We have one and two. So we need also to copy this paste it here and this is question 1.2 remember if you use the naming convention that I told you this becomes really really easy now we're gonna open the preview and hands on the side oh, sorry there you go so we have question 1 question 1 now we're gonna work on question 2 Question 2 has question 2.1, question 2.1, and question 2.2. So let's copy this, paste it over here, question 2.2, and question 2.3 as well. Question 2.3, because we took three screenshots of this one. And then question 3, we only took one screenshot, and it's already there. Question 4, we only took one screenshot, 
and it's already there and then question five we only took one screenshot and it's already there now before I submit anything I am gonna do right click I'm gonna export it to PDF make sure that your file is saved once the PDF file is already I mean I missed the PDF extension PDF preview install there you go now that now that we generated our PDF file before we submit we're gonna just look at look it up just gonna take a look at it make sure that it looks all right it's gonna it's generating that's gonna take a little bit Let's see if we can open it in the file manager if it opens better at the end of the day you know that's final and PDF okay we have the first screenshot we have the second screenshot we have question two question three question five question four what are you question four question four and question five now that we have completed that you can go all the way to the top close that close that close this close log into blackboard and submit your 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 midterm I hope you find this video useful um, till next time